Welcome to another video where we're going through the cat pat phase one. And in our previous video, we were busy with the 10 questions. We got our questions done. We were writing down this, where we got that information from. But now we need to evaluate the quality of the sources. Now, hopefully you've done this already before writing the information about your sources, because we don't want to write information about bad sources. Hopefully the research you've done has found good quality sources. So this is how we're going to justify why our sources are of a good quality and that we should be taking them seriously and that we should be using the information from them. In our previous videos, we would have done our 10 questions, which have four different types of levels from three different types of categories. So we would have had a whole bunch of questions. And then we, in our most recent video, we looked at the information about where we got the answers for those questions. And we wrote the biographical information, whether it's from a website or a book or a video, etc. Now we're going to fill in this bit, which is the last bit about the information about the source. Now, hopefully the information that you found is of a good quality. If you see over here, they specify the criteria. We want to check the authority, who is the person or organization that published the source, how current or up to date the information is, how accurate is the information, how objective it is, are there any biases that we need to be aware of, and how much of the information does it cover. So they actually give us a nice little example here. When we talk about the authority, we just need a sentence or two to justify the quality. So for the authority, we're just saying the author is who they are. So we need to might do some research on the author. The currency, we're going to talk about when that article was uploaded. So they say that it was published in this and addresses current matters. The accuracy, a lot of the times our accuracy is going to be talking about that the information corresponds with other sources or is accurate in terms of recent information. The objectivity, we're going to say that it's factual, there's no biases on the information. And then coverage, what information is that information covering? So we're going to do that for all the sources. So we're just going to write a sentence. As I said, I have a video that explains these criteria for quality of information in more detail. I'll put a link in the video description so you can go use that just to review what it means to check out the authority, the currency, so you know what you're looking for. So I would go check that video out next and then come back here and then we're going to fill this part in. So we're just going to write down simple statements. So let's take, for example, we're looking at this article. So we have all the details mentioned over there, but we want to check the authority. So when I look at the authority, I want to look at the author or I want to look at the organization for justification of why we should use them. So there's a link to this particular author, so I can click on them. And here we've got all articles from them. That's not helping me much. So maybe we can search on their name. So I went and searched for them. Let's go see if we can find it. That seems to be the person that we're looking at because they are at that university. So we can go look at their LinkedIn profile and we can see this is the person. And then we can go see about them. They are an experienced IT marketing professional. They are someone that is in the IT field. And you can see their experience. So yeah, we can write about that person if you want to. So I've just mentioned that they are an experienced IT specialist that is knowledgeable in IT and related fields. And we found that out because of their LinkedIn. If we can't find information about the person, then we would then go look at the organization. So with the URBE University, there should be about us somewhere at the bottom here. There's the about us. So let's go read about it. So then you can go and read through here to see if you can find information that you can talk about. Maybe say that they've been around for a long time or they focus on particular IT careers. You can also go look at accreditation. And there you can see that they are accredited by a particular organization for career schools and colleges. So maybe that's going to be your justification of why they know what they're talking about. So you can say the university is well known in the IT field. They've been around for a while and they are accredited by the ACCSC. So you can use that in your authority. Under currency, you would then look at the date the article was created. The two options you're really gonna be talking about. You're gonna be talking about the information is quite up to date, therefore it is valid. You can see here they say the article is published in that and addresses current matters. So you can do something along those lines. If the article is quite old, and you still think the information is relevant, then under currency, you need to mention that although the information is older, it is still relevant and unchanged today. So mention something along those lines. So you're either going to be mentioned it's current and up to date, or it's still relevant even despite its age. Under accuracy, the key thing is here that the information corresponds with related sources. So trying to find other websites that are saying the same thing would be really useful. So maybe looking at some key text that it's talking about or claims, for example, that line over there, search on that and see if there 
and websites that are saying something similar. Another example, for example, in this case, you can go look down at the bottom and you can actually see that they've got references. So you can say that they reference all their work. So all their claims are valid because they reference. And then you can go and check them out to see if they are valid with what they are saying here. And then here you can mention that there are references present and all those references tie in with what is being said. So mention something like that will give you the accuracy. So use that wording particularly to help you. With the objectivity, it's pretty much going to be the same thing. You're going to be saying that it's factual and presented objectively. There's no biased information. If you think there is a bias, then maybe say that, that it's geared more towards this. You might want to mention, for example, that the information is based actually but particularly only for South African information but other than that the information is valid things along those lines you don't want to be copying and pasting that particular explanation every single time you want to elaborate on it explain that specifying whether you think that the information is objective or not if there is a bias maybe mention that there is a slight bias for this but you can mention that for objectivity and then coverage what does the information cover it covers a vast variety of information regarding AI systems that'll be different for each one so this one you can say covers artificial intelligence but focuses particularly on students at university and the impact on them so you will adjust the coverage for the source that you are using it's technically like a mini summary of what that source is because you're basically saying what that source is covering in that article same with something like this you are going to maybe look at this over here to give you an idea of what you should be writing for your coverage so that's going to be just a short summary of what that website is about for the coverage it covers this and look particularly at the words like what the content it covers and who the audience is for that content and that's what i would mention in the coverage so it covers this topic of ai and it focuses predominantly on students or focus predominantly on medical fields or something like that so use that as part of your wording when you specify the coverage you're going to do that for all of your sources take note that if you've got for example this web source is being used for both question one and question five once you have done it for question one you can then go and copy that part and then go paste it for question five if you are using this structure if you're using our second structure where you don't have the quality of information here, you have specified that website source one, for example, is over there. Then you scroll down to this table where you can say this is the details of web source one. Then you will just go and fill those information over there. And that will only happen once because we can then come here and say, oh, question four and question one relate to source one. We can come over here to source one and see all the details about if that information is quality information. This method has a lot more space for you to type, so it's not a bad option, but it depends on how you've set up your 10 questions. But either way, you should have that all filled in. Therefore, you would have had all the information about your questions done, and now we've got all the details about your sources filled out. In our next video, we'll look at the summary. And if we come over here to the rubric, you can see they want those five categories. Have we clearly addressed and motivated for all our three sources? If we have, if we filled in all those details for all three sources, we are going to get all four marks. If we leave out a source, or if you only cover a couple of these, we're only going to get three marks and so on. So just fill out everything for all of them and you're guaranteed to get those four marks. And therefore, you'll be even further on the way to getting a great mark for your phase one. So go do that so long. Go do out your authority, currency, accuracy, objectivity, and coverage. Remember that video that I mentioned that can help you understand those concepts. If you're not too sure, use that as a guide for filling out your quality of information. If you missed one of the videos that we've mentioned in this video series, make sure you go to at Mr. Long IT and Cat on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss if we post new videos, but you should find the others in the playlist there. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.